the Department of Meteorology and Atmospheric Science has weathered the COVID storm over the course of the last 18 months. No better person to talk to than our own department head, Dr. David Stensrud, who joins us tonight with more on what the department went through and what we're looking forward to as we go ahead for the next year. Hi, Dave, welcome to the show. Thanks, Rob, it's great to be here. So no doubt it's been a challenging 18 months for everyone. Uh, what's been your perspective or reflection on how the department kind of weathered this storm? I always go back to, you know, March of 2020, when we basically had five days to transition from in-person teaching to basically online teaching for all of our courses. And the faculty really stepped up um, in terms of sharing ideas and, and knowledge, we had great support from the uh, John Dutton E-Education Institute, which is part of the college. And so within just you know, a few days, we actually made this transition, I think, very well. I mean, the students made it to the end of the semester. And then last summer, you know, we worked on, on basically refining that. You know, I think, as you know, our, our courses are highly mathematical and doing mathematical derivations you know, basically in a set of slides is pretty hard. So you need to have that sort of chalkboard experience. And online courses aren't necessarily set up to do that well. So our faculty did some exploration and testing and I think had some really, you know, unique solutions and made it work so that by fall, we were really set to, I think, continue uh, with primarily online, online teaching. So I think we weathered the storm really well and I'm very appreciative to our, our faculty for all that they did to make that happen. Uh, Dave, the department is world renowned for research. How did COVID impact some of the ongoing projects involving our faculty and students? So it does vary quite a bit from person to person. Uh, so for example, for me, most of my research uh, is really founded upon operational data streams. So these are observations that are collected by the National Weather Service. And of course, those continued because, you know, the weather forecasting enterprise relies on that. Uh, other faculty are basically out in the field during the summertime. So we had faculty members who were, you know, planning to launch weather balloons into severe storms to study tornado genesis, uh, you know, capturing trace gases to measure their amounts, involved in international fuel campaigns where they were launching weather balloons and, you know, flying instrumented aircraft in, into storms, you know, all over the globe. And those projects have been put on hold. And so it certainly has, has interrupted what they you know, were hoping to do. Uh, one project I think is scheduled hopefully for next summer, so summer 2022, so that's a two year delay. Uh, so it's impacted the research productivity, uh, also impacted students having to basically shift a bit what they were gonna do research wise uh, to get them done in a timely manner. So it certainly has had an impact. It just varies a lot person to person. So as we're now in this fall semester, what are some of the goals that you have for the faculty, staff, and students? And are there any kind of uh, initiatives or, or research that's ongoing or, or being planned? So, and so in terms of research, you know, research really is led by the individual faculty. And there are you know, maybe 100 research projects ongoing in the department at any one point in time. So that's really not going to change. Uh, I guess from my perspective, what I'm looking at is, is from what can the department do to help? And I think what, what I see as a, as a hope for, for this coming year is to bring back more personal interaction. Uh, you know, right now, when you wanna talk with someone, you have to set up a meeting and you get together on Zoom, like, like you and I are doing the hallway conversations that we used to have, or, you know, I just walk into somebody's office and sit down and say, I have a question for you because I know you're an expert in, in, in whatever. Uh, those discussions have been much harder. Uh, and so how do we get back to where we have this sort of natural discussion that's, that's ongoing? And it's really an important part of science. It's sharing ideas and, and being able to talk to somebody who you know is you know, an expert in this area and, and see what you can learn. I think somehow bringing that back in to the department uh, for both faculty and students, I think is, is something that I would like to see happen. I just don't know, you know, what, you know, the virus is going to do that, that could, you know, throw a wrench into that, into that hope. But that is, I'm looking for ways to do that and to actively pursue those as much as we can. Dave, we're almost out of time, but one last question. 
Uh, how does the department curricula continue to evolve with climate change research, such as the latest IPCC report and others? Uh, when those are released, are we preparing students for entering fields that are going to be dominated by a changing climate? So great question. As you probably know, we already have a required course in climate dynamics that our students take. And it, it lays the foundation for the drivers of, of climate you know, for the earth in the past, you know, today, and also looking into the future. And so those foundational elements aren't going to change. Uh, but we do need to update content with the latest IPC findings so the students are, are aware of that. Uh, now, currently, we offer a PhD in climate science for students who want to pursue that. And we are planning to offer an undergraduate option, which kind of like is an emphasis uh, in climate science for future students. And that I suspect will get more into the impacts of, of climate science, you know, in terms of you know, decisions that people make or businesses make uh, in, various, in various ways. I mean, from a personal level, I can't speak for anyone else, you know, but the IPC results and you know that just came out are, are not a great surprise. You know, I was convinced by the data decades ago that you know, the burning of fossil fuels is warming the earth. It was really a question of how fast that was gonna happen and also what it would take before we would get together as a global community and actually take action. Dr. David Sensru, Dave, thanks so much for chatting with us tonight on Weather World, uh, Department Head of uh, the Department of Meteorology and Atmospheric Science here at Penn State. We appreciate it. And we will be back with a recap of the short range forecast in just a moment.